We're here in the Glucksman Map Library to look at one of the real treasures of Trinity College, the Fagel Library. This is a magnificent collection of printed materials and some manuscripts collected together by the Fagel family in the Netherlands, primarily during the 17th and 18th centuries. When Napoleon invaded the Low Countries in the early 19th century, the Fagels fled to London, and in 1803, Trinity College purchased the entire library. It's not very well known outside of academic circles, and this project intends to bring the cartographic material, maps, battle plans, cityscapes, to a wide public audience through an open access free website. Building on the success of the Down Survey of Ireland project, which was launched in Trinity last year, this new Fagel project will be an interdisciplinary one, working with the departments of history, geography, and computer science in association with an external partner, Google, to make over 10,000 images available on this website. Also, we'll be using new technology to try and explore and exploit the material in exciting new ways. Through 3D representation of some of these cities, streetscapes walking through the old early modern towns as they might have existed and looked at that particular time, and also getting battle plans overlaid onto modern topography so we can see how the battle unfolded over the course of a day or two. In the 17th century, Amsterdam really was the world centre in terms of map making. It was also the golden era of the Dutch Empire as they colonised large parts of Asia and the Americas, trying to harness much of the world's wealth. Part of that project was that they had to map everything out to see where it was. So these maps in the Fagel collection are truly global in scope from wonderful maps of the world, such as this one from 1718, and we can see just to what extent the world, at least in outline, has now been sketched out. Though there are still a number of gaps here in Australia, for example. Alaska simply doesn't exist in the Northwest Passage, and indeed Antarctic is blank as well. But we can see huge progress being made in terms of the scope of what they're trying to outline. Moving from the global, here we see Europe, and again, it's just the wealth of detail that are on these maps. These wonderful cartouches up here, just great works of art in of themselves. And then just the level of detail around each country, beautifully coloured, beautifully presented. And again, it gives us a great sense of what Europe was like at this stage during the 18th century. And then we move from, if you like, the continental down to country level. And here again, we have a very different type of map. And this is uh, of northern Italy uh, and uh, moving over into what would now be France. And again, right down to individual towns, villages, roads are marked out here. Uh, the boundaries are clearly delineated. And again, just a wonderful detail we'll have. And these for the Fagels and indeed for the Dutch government would have been invaluable. And the next level down is actually towns and cities. And there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these in the Fagel uh, map collection. Here we see an absolutely magnificent example of Venice, one of the sort of key city-states of the early modern period, in all its splendor. Moving now from one type of city map to another, we can see one dating actually from 100 years earlier in the 17th century of another Italian city-state, this time Genoa. And here we've actually got a 3D representation of the city itself, down to an extraordinary level of detail of individual buildings along the streets. And one of the things we're hoping to do with this project, as I say, in using innovative GIS or geographic information system software to begin to move through this landscape in a very real way, to actually be able to walk the streets of Genoa again as if we were there in the 17th century. Because the purpose of this project is not just to have some of these magnificent images on view so people will be able to see over 10,000 of these magnificent maps, but also to be able to do some interesting work with them and to make them, if you like, come to life. This will be of interest to a wide range of users, from academic scholars working in the field to the general public. The first stage of the project should be completed by the summer of 2015 when the website goes live. But that's only the first stage of what we hope will be major research work that will continue with the Fagel collection. And we hope to put together a major European consortium with a view to developing these projects into the future.